other honorable ministers here present and represented. Our deputy governors, MDNDIC, CEOs of banks, colleagues from the Central Bank of Nigeria and NDIC, captains of Nigerian financial industry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very delighted to be here this morning. Amongst perhaps the one professional group I know best and can generally call my family. My presence here today and indeed the presence of all of us is an indication that this gathering is a critical one in the light of the hues and cries of what some now call the third or the fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. You all recall last year, in the middle of the pandemic, we canceled the retreat. It did not go last year. And we, had rem we, have re we remain hopeful that in 2021 we would, despite some of the daunting challenges that we have faced. And I was just chatting with the governor as he was, as we were just strolling in, said that we canceled last year's retreat and we remain hopeful that 2021 will hold. And suddenly since last week or about a week and a half ago, the noise about the Omicron variant of COVID began to spread, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. And we were beginning to ask ourselves, should we cancel again? Up till yesterday, I was contemplating, should we cancel? Now, if we do not cancel, what should we do to ensure that everyone here is safe. At, I spoke to the organizers, those who were in charge, and they said that they had put in place measures to observe all essential protocol of government. Indeed, everybody that is here today, not that we have a, a passport, right, a COVID, um, vaccination passports, but everyone here, as we speak, as we sit here today, has been tested and has attained to be negative of COVID. So we should all feel free that yes, we're in an environment where we are all safe. Despite these admittedly difficult times, we are here because no challenge is insurmountable for the determined, the cooperative, and the persistent. Given all the time that has passed since the outbreak of the pandemic, I'm sure most of us know its story of discomfort, despair, destruction, destitution, and death. Yet, we're here because from these ashes have come a one wonderful light, an enduring hope, a therapeutic healing, and a resilient people. Before I continue my speech, I'd like to especially thank the Bankers Committee and also say thank you, the CEOs of our banks, for your support and for your cooperation since the advent of COVID in February 2020. When COVID broke, we called on the banks under the auspices of the Coalition Against COVID-19, COVID, and the banking industry stood strong with the private sector and we did the little we could to help our country and to help our people to overcome the challenges. 
of COVID-19. Aside from just being members of CACOVID, we called on the banks. We said that the, bank, the banking industry constitutes a very, very important segment of the monetary policy arm of government. And because even from textbooks that we have read in economics, banks constitute what we can call catalysts to growth in any economy. We called on you. We did several things appealing to you. We, I even got, I got to a point where I was beginning to appeal to say, look, how can we have a situation where the banking industry is growing, the, bank, the banks are declaring profit, but the economy is not growing well, or that our people are living in destitution, and that, we, that it is not possible for us as bankers to live a comfortable life, and yet in the midst of destitution and problems in our country. We did call on you, and you stood to the occasion, and you supported. I thank you most sincerely. I cannot say that Central Bank did this alone. Everything that we have done since February 2020, realizing your importance as a catalyst to growth in the economy, has been with your support. I thank you. I must say, yes, the economy is growing. Yes, inflation is moderating. Yes, we're beginning to see signs, even in the midst of the third or the fourth pandemic. But I must say, whereas we see a green light ahead of us at the end of the tunnel, but I must say that the road ahead for us to get to the green light at the end of the tunnel remains very, very rough. If we consider the fact that this is an economy that is growing at a pace that lacks population growth rate, we all must work hard and continue, we will continue to crave your support to work with us because we will continue to come up with policies indeed that, may, that in your own boardrooms, you will find as hurtful to your own quest to make more profit for your shareholders. But we will continue to count that you will rely and work with us to say that it's not just about you making profit for your shareholders. It is also about you contributing to the growth of our economy. Even where there are some discomforts, whether you will play your part, you will stand strong, support the government, and support the Central Bank of Nigeria to deliver a stronger and resilient economy. As we all recall, the global economy and indeed the Nigerian economy faced unprecedented challenges which led to a significant downturn in global growth last, last witnessed during the Great Depression of 1929. To contain the downturn and drive the recovery of Nigeria's economy, the Monetary and Fiscal Authority deployed a series of policy measures that have aided the rebound of Nigeria's growth beginning during the fourth quarter of 2020. Analogous to the position I encapsulated in my treatise last year on the pandemic, Every crisis provides its own opportunities. In that vein, I believe that this crisis, this global crisis of unprecedented phenomenon provide an opportunity for us, I use the word, to reset and rebuild a strong and a more resilient economy for our country. It is in this regard that the theme of this year's retreat, building resilience for economic growth, is both timely and appropriate. As the 12th in the series of annual brainstorming sessions, 
This retreat is another occasion to critically review strategic economic and financial developments in Nigeria. It is indeed an opportunity to find ways to strengthen and reposition our country for unforeseen challenges. Yes, unforeseen challenges. But let me say indeed, today we have foreseen challenges. COVID has dawned on us. And I will say the challenges are foreseen. That to date, the scientists have not been able to tell us that we are going to see an end to COVID. The virus will continue to mutate. We will continue to see um, different countries adopt measures to protect their own. And in the midst of this, we as Nigerians, we that God has thrust on the leadership of this banking industry, we must gather loins and stand strong to see that whatever needs to be done, that we do those things that will help the recovery of our country. We must aim for not only a fast, balanced, and sustainable recovery, but also ensure that through improved access to finance, the fundamentals of our economy are strengthened. That, the, that through access to finance, that the fundamentals of our economy are strengthened. You would, if you talk to anybody that wishes to conduct any banking, any, any business today, so I will say, let me use the word before now, because at least the banking industry has played its part, at least in the last two or several years, trying to support access to finance. But I must say that what most people who would genuinely have business ideas that they want to turn into prosperity, what they will tell you acts as one of their impediments towards achieving their goals is access to finance. It is just not about access to finance, but access to cheap finance. And I'm happy that through the instrumentality of some of the policies that we have put in place in the last or in the recent years, that we have seen a situation where interest rates on loans particularly for those sectors that we consider to be priority sectors that will drive growth of our economy, that those interest rates or those loans are delivered at single digit rates. That people can today also boast and say that they want long-term finance and they truly are able to access long-term finance of 10 years tenure with about two years moratorium and a single digit interest, the single digit interest rate not more, not more than 9%, I must say this has been achieved as a result of the support and ingenuity all of you that, that are here today. We have done several things that people have, cons people have concocted and come up with the conclusion that we have done unorthodox things. And what I have always told people is that Difficult times like this require difficult, difficult requires critical thinking that must bring out from our thoughts uncommon ideas that can solve problems. And listen, let me say this. If you say that one plus one in mathematics is two, then even a youth copper or somebody who studied uh, economics 101 will know that if you add A to B, it will become C. Then there is no need for us as leaders to be here. We might as well sit and allow young people who are just leaving university to, to run our, our economy. But the reason why you have been put there is that you will be confronted by difficult challenges. 
you'll be confronted by an opportunity to think about what can you do, even where solutions look a little bit difficult for you to fathom. And you are going to take uncommon decisions. And you are going to, in fact, adopt unorthodox policies but that you know will drive and deliver the results, which is growth and development of our economy. How would you imagine a situation where, in Nigeria, as inflation is rising, growth is decelerating, and yet, for you to be, for, for the people of the country to be happy, or for your citizens to be happy, what they crave is that price must be low. They crave that inflation must moderate. And at the same time, they crave that they must see growth. And that is why you find that every opportunity where Nigeria confront, is confronted with these kind of challenges, we, we are confronted with stagflationary environment. So how do you tackle a slack, stagflationary environment where you want to bring prices down, you must tighten and make liquidity difficult and raise interest rates that will now also increase inflation, right? And yet you want growth. People will tell you you must spend money, adopt expansionary policies for you, for people to raise uh, access cheap finance, for you to, uh, for you to, to to, 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 to see growth. So we are, Nigeria, I would say, is confronted by very difficult and uncommon challenges. And that is why we must all continue to work hard to see to how can we solve these difficult problems. And today, Monetary Policy Committee of CBN says, yes, our mandate will remain, will remain the primacy of price and monetary stability. But this must also be seen to be conducive to growth. And that is why you will continue to see that we are going to continue to adopt unorthodox policies that some may consider to be unpopular, but I am telling you by the special grace of God, can only, it, it's only through these means that we can expect that we can see good results and we can see green lights at the end of the, of the tunnel. Now, following the pandemic, Many countries closed their borders and restricted movements to curtail the spread of the virus. As a result, we witnessed unprecedented supply chain disruptions accompanied by devastating loss of lives and means of livelihood. The shock also caused increased volatility of crude prices, and we know that at the time, crude prices came down to as low as even $20 per barrel went up again. When it goes up, we're happy. When it's down, we, we lament. We're overwhelmed by the problems created by the volatility in crude prices. We also saw situations where there's a deterioration in global financial conditions. We saw supply chain disruptions. But in the midst of this, the Nigerian economy entered a recession having recorded two consecutive quarters of contraction during the second and third quarter of 2020. 